Good morning, everybody. Uh, today, I wanted to share a personal story. Well, three stories, actually. My three most embarrassing stories as a traveling sales rep. I'm sure those of you that have been in sales long enough and gone across the country, obviously not 2020, but previous years where you're flying, driving, I don't know, taking buses, however you get there. Um, inevitably, when you do that often enough, there will be some opportunities for some embarrassing moments. So I'm going to share my three most embarrassing moments as a traveling sales rep. Number one, I was early on when I was taking over a territory in West Texas from a colleague. You know, so they were basically handing over that territory to me. He flew out with me with our boss. We were on Southwest. We were going to West Texas to do the dog and pony show. You have warm introductions for me so the brokers feel, felt they were in good hands. Well, so we all get on the same flight, of course, uh, kind of in the same group, not quite, um, but we tried to get on the same section of the plane so that we could sit together. Well, my colleague and my boss were able to get a middle seat and an aisle seat uh, to get. So I tried to sit next to him. I'm the young, eager guy, and I'm like, hey, I want to sit next to him and chit chat and, you know, you know, learn some of the biz and talk to him. But, of course, across the aisle, in the aisle seat um, from them was a guy already there. And so rather than doing the appropriate thing, uh, proper etiquette would dictate, well, I'd say, well, okay, I guess I'm not going to sit here. I'll sit somewhere else. No, me being the naive uh, young sales rep that I was, I asked the guy sitting in the aisle seat if he would scoot over to the middle. Now, anybody that knows anything and has ever traveled before realizes that is an absolute no-no. But me being so eager to sit next to my colleagues, um, I didn't even think about that. So the guy, to his credit, super nice, he scoots over you know, because I told them I wanted to sit next to them. My colleagues are laughing their asses off at me for being so so dumb. And then I realized that I'm like, oh crap, I shouldn't have done that. Now this guy's got to sit in the middle. Um, and so I tried to undo it. I'm like, no, sir, I, why don't you just come back over your seat? Don't worry about it. And by that time the damage was done, I couldn't undo it. He's already annoyed at me. So I had to sit next to this guy for an hour that was annoyed at me and sit next to my coworkers who, uh, you know, just, it would stay, they couldn't stop. They couldn't stop laughing the whole time. So that's embarrassing story number one. Embarrassing story number two, uh, also West Texas related, also flight related, but this time I was going back on my own, had a bunch of meetings scheduled, and I was going to fly out there early, early morning, like a 6 a.m. flight. Well, if you don't get there early enough at Love Field in Dallas for Southwest, I think they have a 40 minute cutoff where if you're not there 40 minutes prior to the flight leaving, you can't get on the flight. So I was there like 38 minutes before checking in. I wasn't TSA pre and they're like, we're sorry, sir. You, you missed the cutoff. You, you cannot fly. And I'm like, oh my God, what do I do now? There were no more flights out there that day, or at least they would get me there on time. So I'm like, well, I'm already dressed in my suit. I've got a car. Um, I've got six hours until my lunch. Why don't I look at ways and see if I got enough time? And Lo and behold, it was like a five and a half hour drive. So if I ran back out with my luggage, hopped in my car, I could drive all the way to Lubbock and make it to my lunch in time. So that was actually where uh, I got the nickname Turbo as well. So those same colleagues uh, thought that was just a great story also. And also because I was like early on in the sales rep game, I was like, I'm going to do everything I can. I want to make this happen overnight. I'm going to crush it immediately. And they were all like, hey, slow down. Okay, this is a marathon, not a sprint. And so I got the nickname Turbo from that as well. And to this day, when I, when I see those guys, that's what they call me. So that's embarrassing story number two. Embarrassing story number three, a little grosser. Uh, but again, I think anybody that's done enough traveling will realize that eventually this is going to happen to you. So I was on the um, first night, but going into the second day of um, a road trip to Oklahoma City. So I'd had like one meeting that day. I was sitting down for dinner that night at a, a restaurant across the hotel had, I remember distinctly what I had. I had a blue cheese burger with no bun and sweet potato fries at this kind of swanky, cool sports bar. Well, it was great. You know, paid for it, went back home, watched a little TV before bed, and then I woke up at like 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm like, I don't feel so good. And it was that split second, you know, where you realize, if I don't get up right now, I'm going to puke in the bed. So I get up, jump, run to the bathroom, didn't quite make it, you know, to the toilet, and I will spare everybody the, the grotesque details, but it was a mess. And I'm like, oh my God, what just happened? So I'd gotten food poisoning on this road trip and I had five meetings the next day and I couldn't go to them. I tried to sleep it off. Maybe it was like just a one-time thing, but no, I got sick a couple more times. And here it was like nine o'clock in the morning. I'm sending out emails, like just feeling like absolute dog, you know, 
And, uh, you know, had to cancel all my meetings. So I got, I traveled to Oklahoma City from Dallas for one meeting to get food poisoning. Then I had to travel back home that day. I had to check out from the hotel and all I could get was like coffee in my stomach and I'm just like barely keeping my eyes open driving three hours home. It was bar none the worst road trip I've ever had in my life and you couldn't pay me $50,000 to do that again. So three most embarrassing road trips. I'd love to hear from you all. I'm sure those of you that have been in the game longer probably have some even better ones. Uh, I don't have any drinking stories that are embarrassing, thank God, uh, but I'm sure there's some of those out there as well. So I'd love to hear if anybody wants to share. Appreciate you watching. Bye-bye.